Draft advantage. It's just gonna be down to this tempo. I feel like in terms of ease of execution, both sides have relatively straightforward drafts. Uh, maybe Talon is Prepare lacking a little bit more battle. in team fight control outside of just roar. It's all single target uh, for the most part, whereas you have this threat of RP. You have a lot of area denial coming out on execration. <laughs> uh, I love seeing everyone just so friendly, you know. Honestly, that's the one thing I love. Execration and Talon, the new, the new Talon squad, they are so down-to-earth folk, like both of these teams. Yeah. Amazing. They are, they are very good people. I, I do appreciate these uh, these players as well coming up, right? Like, the fact that they've gone this deep into the qualifiers is very nice. As we might have a level 1 teamfight straight off the bat here between these two. They'll see Shanks. Tashi waiting in the wake with the build strike may get caught. And nice shots to block the stairway. They're still going after Shanks though, but Akashi will die first. Ooh. CML to take the first kill. Chris in the meantime may drop as well on the Spectre. Ponyo, he will go down. CML, another kill coming out for the techies. Meanwhile, they all group up, but CML, CML maybe needs to back off now because WS has got a double kill of his own. Looks like they're going to be both fine. I, I believe you'd, you'd have to argue Execration come out on top because they get the first blood bonus. Again, both kills went to the techies. I, I don't know. It's a, it's a weird one. Oh. Speaking of that tech, you see him melt. Feeling charitable there for a moment, but we'll back off. I mean, this, this is something I love seeing now in Southeast Asian Dota. We're back to much more aggressive movement for these bounty runes. Execration's been the one consistent team that goes for these moves. And this time around, it doesn't bite them too hard. You know, they do manage to go two for two. As you mentioned, CML's the one to get net most of that cold, but... I don't think you mind that going onto your techies too much. Uh, you do get a lot with just additional right click coming out. In fact, he, he goes for the Wraith Band on CML. So a little bit more durability with the Lion trading back. A little bit more damage for him to play with as well as a universal type hero. Does make it maybe a little bit easier to manage the Earth Spike spam that Chokan will want to pull out. But he needs to kind of sit back and regen just a little bit more. The lane for Krish. Is not going to be the easiest. Spectre into Beastmaster does not feel comfy. You will have good coverage from CML, but I don't foresee too many aggressive angles for CML unless Jokem or WS really overstep their bounds, but they have a lot of protection here on Talon's end, so uh, a little bit of a rougher lane for Exe unless CML can work some magic with some consistent sticky bombs and blast offs. What about the other lanes? Like Mid lane, Bob and Chuen going at it. Uh, obviously, this is a very boring lane. Not too much to talk about here. As it is favoring Bob for now, but I imagine it should be relatively even uh, as time goes on. Bottom lane, of course, Akashi and Ponyo against Shanks and Tino. This one's interesting, because we saw the Arc Warden of Tino earlier, and it was really impressive oh, to watch. Is Chuen? Jeez. Oh, ah, he got skewed on this tower. It. Yeah, he, he loves that. Keeps doing that. Oh. Especially at the level 1 Dra Dragon Blood, it's a big opener he's for got, Bob. He's got Skewer in 5, he's got another Shockwave in 5 as well. Is, he could go for this. Uh, looks like Chuen's gonna heal up too quickly though, never mind. Yeah, but it's still not a healthy time for Chuen. We're gonna have a good time here for Bob. Chuen, well, he has the level 2 Dragon Blood, it's not gonna be as threatening. But again, it's a very passive farming lane and Bob has the initiative, so it's gonna be a little bit harder to stop the Magnus from just doing what he wants. Have to be cautious about the spacing onto the tower down, but some aggression onto Shanks. And you do have some damage to come in. Early meld and refraction for Akashi. Is basically a melee hero though, without the side blades. And then mildly awkward lane for Akashi into an Arc Warden. And there is a lot of play. We talked about the strengths of that tag team plus the rundown from Tino. It is something to always be cautious about, especially as the levels scale up. No blocks in the camp, so they've got access to pulls later on. Not too much Ponyo can do, although... Get up the mark with those shards from Shanks, and so now Akashi can go after the task, and Shanks, he may be paying for the aggression as he does go down. Akashi now looking towards Tino, wanting to really apply the pressure. And oh my goodness, that's a lot of damage. I think Akashi's got him. Tino, he will go down to Ponyo, but off the back of one miss shards, they both fall. That should not be happening in this lane. You still have to be cautious on Shanks, going a little bit far forward like that. I mean, the early Meld Strike is really, really strong with that armor reduction. Melts heroes quite fast. And Akashi doing a ton of work. I mean, no 
Side blades being so close, it is risky. And they do manage to get the shards this time. Lux comes in a bit, a little bit later on Takashi. Still, the chase will continue. Oh. But Shanks dropping low again. Akashi spanning right up, but oh. eventually he will fall. As they also find Krish across the map. Krish goes down. Now CML dropping to boot. Joe Cam finds a double. It's just everyone's dying across the map. And you can see what happens when that shard does connect, when they're allowed to play to their aggression here on Execration. Also not the healthiest situation for Talon for the turn, but I appreciate Akashi seeing that it's I do or die at that point. And he is also going for a no Psyblade build, so purely on Refraction and Meld, focusing on survivability, doesn't mind a range disadvantage at all, which is fair. I think it, he's been showing us just how well the TA can chase down with just a couple of pieces of control from that CM. The top lane for Krish, again, just goes back to the nature of this lane. You don't have the best angles for CML unless you try to jump Jokam. Jokam's just been very good with trading back harassment, timing his earth spikes. And for the Spectre to walk into the Beastmaster, it's, it's not very comfy. Every time CML can try to dissuade with the Stinky Bomb, just shoves in the lane a little bit more. It makes it even rougher, although he does at least get the pull to try to stabilize here. Sure, he's getting dragged underneath the Tier 1 tower again in the mid lane, but he's... He's got level 2 Dragon's Blood, so he didn't really take much damage at all from that T1 tower. And I think Bob's just... Bob was just putting the hand up, kind of sending a message, just letting him know he can do that anytime he wants. Uh, Chuan doesn't really seem bothered by it at all, though. He's still out CSing the Magnus, having a very, very good time. Yeah, overall, Talon seemed to be having an extremely good time to get done, with everything going swiftly so far as Akashi being jumped bottom lane again, but Shanks! is just getting destroyed here by Akashi and Ponyo. And he's gone. Another death. It, it's kind of the thing. Like, he throws one shard out. He moves him for the tag team. And they just, they just annihilate him. And you can see why Akashi considers his TA as one of his best along with his Morphling. Doing a ton of work down bot. It's just such an easy target to go for. You can't reach the Arc Warden, but you can always play tag with Shanks. And he, I get the mindset of Shanks, just looking for that aggression. It's so strong for lane, but the TA is just doing way too much damage. And the Crystal Maiden counter control is too strong as Krish. Yeah, top lane, Krish in danger again on the Spectre. There is going to be rotations coming in from Shanks to try and help Krish out. They will snowball Krish away. Joe Cam, though, still going. And WS is able to secure the kill of the Spectre as Joe Cam is Ooh, still alive. Joe Cam. Cancels the blast off midway. With the Earth Spike, Joe Cam gonna walk his way out. WS picks up a triple. Here comes Bob to try and help with the mag, but it's too late. It is just too damn late. For WS, I mean, that, that's a triple kill to be picked up on the Beastmaster. He's 5 0 2 now. He's gonna have some great timings. I believe the Helm of the Dominator is already on the way. Now, this is this is ridiculous. For the side of Talon, really great read from the support duo. Ponyo and WS have just been outstanding. Ponyo and Jokam have been outstanding in just what they can get out of these lanes for their course. And the follow-up from the course has been spectacular as well. They're trying to make moves onto mid with a bottle top-up, but it is a DK. You're not going to be able to jump him anytime soon. And Bob actually has to watch the burn damage now from this dragon form at level 1. Again, it's kind of the same story as the Blacklist game. Not too much chip damage, but uh, Chuan actually saves his Siege Creep just for a little while. Forces out the Fortify at least, but does get a little bit of value. Just some chip. That's a little bit more than Abed had around the same time in the game. I mean, that is true. Here comes the rest of Talon as well. They want to try and get a little bit more damage off by the looks of it. CML is going to be targeted, but he does stay on the right side of that mid lane. Chuan still trying to get some more damage off here. Won't be too much. In fact, Snowball is going to come out from Shanks. They are going to try and make the jump in onto that DK. Blast off cancelled oh, again Joe by Joe Cam. And with that, I mean, well, the mag, he's in a bit of danger now, Bob. Trying to find a way out of this scenario. Meanwhile, Chuan is still backing his way out. Akashi will hold the line. They have taken down Ponyo, but that's all they've gotten so far. Tino is still trying to do with the DK. Chuan. He is able to walk away. I mean, you get a CM kill for your trouble, but that's about it. That's that's not worthwhile. Straight out for Execration. They're abandoning their side lanes. They're allowing Akashi to farm. Trying to focus in on mid. RP's blown up on Bob. Finding nothing really big outside of the CM. It doesn't even catch the CM earlier on. 
We're seeing some issues with the initial damage. Like, you're not ready to shadow step here on Chris just yet. Again, onto the mag. Bob this time around just caught out by the roar of WS, and he just instantaneously dies. WS getting tipped here by Chuen, and rightfully so. He's been fantastic on the Beastmaster. That'll be your mid T1 tower going down before the 10 minute mark. That's the timing you're looking for, this kind of tempo. Oh, see oh, yeah, Just again, they are smothering execration. Just a spark. They're, they're choked out. They, they are just dropping like flies. You've got the level advantage. Early level 6 on the CM is devastating. Is this my fault? Field. Is it, I did say yes. I like execration. Yes, you're, you're still 100%. You're still 100%, Mikey. Yes, yes, it is. This is my Yes, fault. it is. It is. It's, you can take credit here, Mike. All on you. Thank you very much, Wayne the Phoenix, by the way. <laughs> any, uh, any talent betters are very welcome. <laughs> Execration. I mean, mind you, Execration has not hit their timing yet, right? Like, we're looking for the Shadow Step on Krish with the Blade Mail. That's still a little ways off. Blink for Bob sometime away. You do have the Urn for Tino. Spirit Vessel not quite lined up yet. Although, oh, okay. It's already flying out. All right. So the Spirit Vessel's ready. That should lead to more Presence. Uh, the one issue for Execration now is deep wards are not going to be easy to find. All tier 1's still standing very healthily for the side of town. Not a scratch on him except for the bot one. They've got the traps to scout around here on town's end. And that will lead to a very hard time to try to trump Akashi. And Talon now can just play the build-up game. You know, wait for their own items on Chuen. He's working onto the Mage Slayer that we saw last time as well. WS. He pretty much has his home for the Overlord. Uh, within maybe a few more 700, 700 gold or so. Big timing to meet there. Exit will try for the smoke out. They do have the shadow step on Krish. No blade mill, but just a haunt in would help. Let's see if they find an angle here. Ah, Chiwen is really tanky though. That he is. They're gonna try. Watch out. Got to step in from Krish. Chiwen, I mean, he's not that tanky with the spirit rest of the team. He is gone. Spirit Vessel timing from Tino makes it happen. With that, I mean, it's still a lot of heroes being committed for that DK kill, but something they desperately needed here, Execration. Their side lanes are still being forced in quite nicely here by Talon, but well, they'll address that issue when the time comes. I'm getting some action out on Krish as well. Really helps to somewhat accelerate that blade mail timing. Really want to play a little bit more tempo on the Spectre nowadays. So, any activity is welcome. Talon, the buildup is paying off. I mean, Akashi already has a Dragon Lance, already has enough for one Metal Hammer into the Desolator. And we were talking about it from Draft. The Deso timing of Talon kicks up this tempo. Lines up for one team fight into either the Tier 2 or Roshan, likely Roshan first. After that, free clearing of the outer tower starts to become a reality. And Exa, it, it's, it's going to be a rough fight into that. At least with a blink now up on Bob, initiation's a little bit more stable and less telegraphed in comparison to Radiant's Shanks trying to run up with Snowball. So they can find some openings with this. And you're also inching towards more control with Tino onto the Rod of Atos. So I just need to find some of these squishy supports. If they only had vision, Radiant kind of get scan. that chomp. Great scan from Talon to just spot them walking around the triangle. They get a read as to maybe an angle from the group up. And Bob wants to use that blink so badly. They will smoke for it. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. See if they can get a bit of, of a real reveal off here for Bob. The Joe Cam's the closest target they've got to them, so not really what you would want, but they're going to have to accept it. So Shadow Step is in on Bob. We'll see the blink up as well. So you find a line kill. Again, I don't believe it's what they really want. They're going to try for a bit more. Maybe finding out Ponyo, but Ponyo is able to back his way up. And the thing is, while all this is happening, WS and Akashi, they are still farming very effectively. Akashi, he's about, what, 600 gold away from having the full death later up. It's, uh, the, the timings that are being hit here from Talon uh, are pretty damn good. With the Deso and Helm of the Overlord, these towers are going to melt. Yeah, that they will. That's something Exa really cannot allow. They can't allow any pressure onto the Tier 2s. But it's kind of all in for Execration, right? Like this initiation from Bob has to pan out. The Shadow Step of Krish has to be on the right target in the back line after his spells are expended. It's all about timing there. They've still got control under Triangle, so some, some good farm coming out for Bob. He's going to be able to juggle that around a little bit. 
town. They can't afford to keep playing this farm game themselves. They will go for the smoke tank now to chew in. No blink up yet. The mage slayer is there to provide a little bit more resilience for chew in. That it is. Mines will give away the uh, the smoke though. Or do they? Fresh. Still gonna walk around that area. He's gonna get caught out by his tier two tower. He's just dead. Boy oh boy, how Chris just gets destroyed there in the uh, by the tier two. Nobody even needs to try and think about helping out. And that's that's a pretty ugly moment for Chris. He just TP'd out of the top, sensing gank into the mid, and still walks into the gank somehow. So and have to try to walk back into a lane to farm or just walk back to the jungle. Missing out on some efficiency in CS. And that movement up top does open a siege onto tier 1. Metallon's already just forcing in the top anyway with a granite golem creep. As the overlord from WS will just allow easy sieging for them now. And that desolator we were talking about for Akashi is flying out now as well, Mike. So TA is set to go. Some decent padding with the Dragonlance. The minus armor. Full gear for that TA. One team fight into tier 2 into Roshan. Things start to snowball hard for Talon here. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. The blink now up on Chuen. Yeah, so is there for, for Akashi. Is under Secretion still 7k behind. Heavily relying on Krish. Being able to keep up here with the uh, with the empower bonus of, of Bob being provided. Maybe he can farm at an escalated pace, but still against the TA of Akashi, he's just nowhere near. That speed of farm. Actually, I wonder what kind of item he goes for next. Do you want the blink to the BKB? In fact, hold that thought, because there is a raw to fly out on Bob, but he did get the skewer away, so he is safely out of range of Talon if they do lose Ponyo. Execration. Wanting a bit more, shards are going to catch Joe Camp. So the lion in huge trouble, but here comes Akashi going after Shanks. Meanwhile, Bob, he's committed the RP on WS, but it does nothing. Akashi. Thunder drop very low on the TA, will still turn for Krish, they do go, both go down in fact. Tino in the meantime, Tino being chased by a big mud goal oh. is down. Unfortunate. It's Bob still on the run, Chuen not leaving the man alone. Bob should eventually tick out and he does. A 4 for 2 trade in the favour of Talon. The only survivor was CML. It looks a little bit awkward that Deso reveal for Akashi, maybe not the smoothest that he'd want. It still does pay off for Talon. Like the initial roar, uh, catching on the skewer, not ideal. But Bob still finding the angle back in for the RP was nice. I think one big thing in that fight was Tino's positioning. He had a really good angle. He dropped down those rates, made it really awkward for Talon to find a good position. It's so oppressive when you're up against those spark rates. The slow end of damage starts to really pile up. But that's the fight that will lead into the Roshan for Talon. Knowing that RP's down, there's not going to be great counterplay for Exe. And Roche does not take long when you have a Beastmaster and a Deso up. They'll still smoke out on Exe. They know the Roche is happening with a scan and just the TA timings, but it's going to be a bit trickier without that team control here. That's what it will be. Roche aren't doing it anyway, so you, you don't really have much of a choice here. Alan looking to rush in through the top lane. Execration is still set up for this. If they are fighting without an RP on Bob, it's still down for another 15 seconds. And Hex is oh. immediately out. He never got the skewer off. It seems as though Bob is just gone. Oh, Akashi. Shanks. Shanks going down as well. Akashi just doing so much damage. There goes Tino to boot. Oh boy, Talon. I mean, they've hit their timings all right. That tier 2 top tower is not going to last at all. And Hell, I, I mean, you might even be thinking about high ground here, John. I'll be frank with you, with, with how well they've just hit everything. Why the hell not just t touch the tier 3 tower a little bit? For now, they're going to be conservative. They'll go back into the mid tier 2 tower and take care of that. Uh, high ground's always a bit of a challenge. They know RP should be up and running again, as it was still going off cooldown. Was off cooldown in that next fight. So, uh, they know Bob didn't manage to pop it. It's risky going high ground oh, up Krish. against that. Although... Krish gets spotted out by Joe Camp. Joe Camp setting WS? up the easiest kill of his life, and now well, at least they do get WS. He was still hanging around the mid lane. 
And I, I'd still say Krish going down is a much bigger deal. Yeah, it stalls out this timing for the Radiance for Krish. He's not the big tanky target just yet. Joe Cam gets a good hex. See you, well. See you later, sir. Joe Cam's a PA. beast. Yeah, he certainly Joe is. Joe Cam's just been so on point. Like, his earth spikes into the blast offs, his instant hexes. And we talked about this with the line pickup. The one thing they have to save them from Bob pulling heroes back is that hex. It's their fastest response. And he's caught Bob off in that one big fight top. Yeah, but Bob, he's already There's going for the DKB. He needs it. He knows he has to preemptively pop it as well when jumping in. It's just It just feels impossible with how quick Joe Cam is. But we've seen this from Joe Cam over the years. He's always been phenomenal on his pause for Still 22 to 10. Execration, 12k behind. Still have a lot of catching up to do here on the exit end. They are inching towards... The point where a little turtling is going to be required. And Bob's probably going to be able to hunt down with the supports. But Tino and Krish are going to need to just focus in on whatever farm they can find. Even Tino is working towards the Midas as you tend to go on the Arc Warden. So trying to set the recovery plan out. Bot tier 1 falls. And bot tier 2 set to fall now as well. And with the siege potential from Talon. Yeah, and it, it takes very little time to get all of this done. They're setting up a really good timer here as well, Mike. It's going to be 20 minutes straight into Tormentor as well. It's literally everything going their way. We are right back down to the, uh, the ground. Ponya will get a shot. Why the hell not? Crystal clone it now available. I mean, talent, it's just a matter of, you know, how long do you want to wait to approach that high ground? Plus, there is still a tier 2 tower standing in the mid lane, so they can go after that first. Invisibility! Execration. Radiant are scanning. It's a very, very desperate time. You are still working on towards the Radiance of Krish, which eventually is going to come out, but... Not at the speed at, at which he would have liked. Oh. Chuen, but luckily he is in this right now, so he will not get stunned up by Chuen. But that mid T2 tower completely just gone. Oh, not even close. No defense times to come from Execration. And they what? Push, push in Akashi, perhaps? Like, he does still have an Aegis up. You'd have to do it twice. Mm. Do it. If he forced it out... If you force it out, I think theoretically do have enough damage for the two lives here. Especially with Tino around. With Tree Spirit Vessel charges 6 basically with a Tempest double. You have more than enough burn to kind of deal with that TA. Uh, they do play it cautiously. Issue for Execration. No map control whatsoever. Even in that oh, free Krish. time they can go around. Oh it's no. Yeah, Joe Camp's found him again. Joe Camp's just stalking this guy. He's giving no chance for the spec though. I mean, this is just going to be so demoralizing. If you are Execration, the one saving grace is the Spectre Lake game, and it's just not coming. Uh, Joe Cam is not allowing it. It certainly isn't. Really good awareness out from Joe Cam. Great follow through from the team. Will they be able to feed? Yeah, they even feed off of the Tempest double. 240 gold going to Chu Wen to accelerate that Ags timer. At the very least, they'll find an Amplify damage rune on Shank stolen away. But I don't think Akashi minds that too much. Aegis uh, is gone. So I'm going to have to wait for that respawn in 2 minutes 40. How long that timer will be before risking the high ground. That is some time for Exa, but again, they don't have map control. No outer towers, only one outer ward watching the forward part of their top jungle. Nothing else. Map completely empty of information. Only maybe a couple of mines to give some sound cues and ideas. But... It's, it's a barren map. It's a hard map to play right now. And that just makes it tough to look for these catch-up pickoffs, right? Like, you've got Tusk, you've got Techies, you've got the Shadow Step. You want to pick them off one by one. But you can't jump anyone that you can't see. And you can't you can't go for these kills if you can't see them. No, of course you cannot. The... Oh, it's a crash, you know. It's still 18k behind now. We're trying to get that buff up on Krish. Another four-man smoke to come from Talon. Into the mid lane they go. 
CMO getting more mines down, might be able to scout the smoke out for his team. Chuan eventually is going to spot him out. The CMO at the very least isn't the biggest kill in the world, but it is still a kill. CMO at least buying some time and space for his team. In fact, he's still alive, still running, buying even more time. Surely they can get it. There's a lot of space <laughs> being made by CMO. In fact, he might actually make it out. I think he has. Oh, the TP away, he's made it. Oh, would you look at that? Bob? Oh, Bob, though. Well, I mean, this is a bigger kill if they can get it. Problem is, it's two supports versus Bob, but it might not be a problem because Bob is melting and Akashi Ooh. just jumps in. Final hit is there. So, yeah, you, you, you lose CML, but you find Bob anyway, so who the hell cares? Certainly don't. You're more than happy on Talon still making that work out. And Xer just trying to, you know, get some space. It would have been better if CML could have gotten a ward. I'm not going to be able to pin down Chuen. Quiet. Unfortunately. It's a damage issue. Oh, Joe Oh boy, CML this time around. Not going to be able to escape Akashi just with so much damage. First down for Techies. Tier 3 mid tower will be under siege. Execration really have no hope of defending this, they'll just let it go down. When I say they have no hope, CML's gonna buy back, and it seems as though Execration are gonna give it a crack. Talon, not too afraid yet, have not backed off. We'll go for the range racks, or we'll let the creeps do the rest of the work. Bob is trying to find himself to skew a target. He'll find WS on the Beastmaster. The jump is there for no though. Way. WS is just not dying. He is not dying at all. Bob's the one in trouble. Bob is down. There goes the task. Shanks is down to boot. Tino's not too safe either. Akashi will finish off the Arc Warden. It is probably around that time to call it, boys. There is no coming back to this game one. GG. Jesus. Talon. They've got, they've got some hunger in them. Yep. Getting a really fast game one after a drawn out series up against Bleed. They do manage to get this one their way. Execration. And coming 